Welcome everybody. This is Alan with Daily Armor of God. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you're all doing well. This is my Finish in the Bible in One Year project and we are on day 260. 260. We're in the book of First Chronicles. We'll be reading chapters 15, 16, and 17 today. So we're going to learn more about, well, it's basically a summary of what's been going on with uh, David trying to move the Ark to Jerusalem. So that's what we read in the last chapter is they tried, but David had to keep it at um, this person's place for three months because I guess he was trying to find a good spot for him. Um, not entirely sure the details, but maybe we'll read the details here in today's reading. So let's go ahead and get started, shall we? First Chronicles 15, verse 1. And David made him houses in the city of David, and prepared a place for the ark of God, or Elohim, and pitched for it a tent. Then David said, None ought to carry the ark of Elohim but the Levites. For them hath the Lord, or Jehovah, chosen to carry the ark of Elohim, and to minister unto him forever. And David gathered all Israel together to Jerusalem to bring up the ark of Jehovah unto his place, which he had prepared for it. And David assembled the children of Aaron and Levites, of the sons of Kohath, Uriel the chief, and his brethren, 120, of the sons of Merari, Asiah the chief, and his brethren, 220, of the sons of Gershom, Joel the chief, and his brethren, 130, of the sons of Elizaphan, Shemaiah the chief and his brethren two hundred. Of the sons of Hebron, Eliel the chief and his brethren fourscore. Of the sons of Uziel, Abinadab the chief and his brethren a hundred and twelve. And David called for Zadok and Abiathar the priests, and for the Levites, for Uriel, Asiah, and Joel, and Shemaiah, and Eliel, and Aminadab. And said unto them, Ye are the chief of the fathers of the Levites. Sanctify yourselves, both you, ye and your brethren, that ye may bring up the ark of Jehovah, Elohim, of Israel, unto the place that I have prepared for it. For because ye did it not at the first, Jehovah our Elohim made a breach upon us, for that we sought him not after the due order. So the priests and the Levites sanctified themselves to bring up the ark of Jehovah, Elohim, of Israel. And the children of the Levites bear the ark of Elohim upon their shoulders with the staves thereon, as Moses had commanded according to the word of Jehovah. And David spake to the chief of the Levites to appoint their brethren to be singers with instruments of music, psalteries, and harps, cymbals, sounding by lifting up the voice with joy. So the Levites appointed Hemam, the son of Joel, and his brethren, Asaph, and the son of Barakiah, and the sons of Merari, their brethren, Ethan, the son of Cushiah, and with them their brethren of the second degree, Zechariah, Ben, Jazeel, and Shemarmoth, and Jehiel, and Uni, Eliab, and Benaiah, and Messiah, Matithiah, and Eliapheth, and Mekniah, and Obededom, and Jehiel, the porters. To this so the singers, Hemam, Asaph, and Ethan, were appointed to sound with cymbals of brass. And Zechariah and Aziel and Shemiramoth and Jehiel and Uni and Eliab and Maseah and Benaiah with psalteries on Alamoth. And Matahiah and Eliapheth and Mekaniah and Obed-Dedom and Jehiel and Azaziah with harps on the Sheminith to excel. And Chenaniah, the chief of the Levites, was for song. He instructed about the song because he was skillful. And Barakiah and Elkanah were doorkeepers for the ark. And Shebaniah and Jehoshaphat and Nathaniel and Amasai and Zechariah and Benaiah and Eliezer the priests did blow with the trumpets before the ark of Elohim and Obededom and Jehiah were doorkeepers for the ark. So David and the elders of Israel and the captains over thousands went to bring up the Ark of the Covenant of Jehovah out of the house of Obededom with joy. And it came to pass when God, or Elohim, helped the Levites that bear the Ark of the Covenant of Jehovah that they offered seven bullocks and seven rams. 
And David was clothed with a robe of fine linen. And all the Levites that bear the ark, and the singers, and Chenaniah, the master of the song, with the singers, David also had upon him an ephod of linen. Thus all Israel brought up the ark of the covenant of Jehovah with shouting, and with sound of the cornet, and with trumpets, and with cymbals, making a noise with psalteries and harps. And it came to pass, as the ark of the covenant of Jehovah came to the city of David, that Machau, the daughter of Saul, looking out at the window, saw King David dancing and playing, and she despised him in her heart. Hmm. All right. First Chronicles 16, verse 1. So they brought the ark of Elohim and set it in the midst of the tent that David had pitched for it, and they offered burnt sacrifices and peace offerings before Elohim. And when David had made an end of offering the burnt offerings and the peace offerings, he blessed the people in the name of Jehovah. And he dealt to every one of Israel, both man and woman, to every one a loaf of bread and a good piece of flesh and a flag and a wine. And he appointed certain of the Levites to minister before the Ark of Jehovah and to record and to thank the praise of Jehovah, Elohim of Israel. Asaph the chief, and next to him Zechariah, and Jael, and Shemaramoth, and Jehiel, and Mataniah, and Eliab, and Benaiah, and Obededom, and Jael with psalteries and with harps. But Asaph made a sound with cymbals. Benaiah also and Jazael, with the priests with trumpets, continually before the Ark of the Covenant of Elohim. Then on that day David delivered first his psalm to thank Jehovah into the hand of Asaph and his brethren. Give thanks unto Jehovah, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the people, sing unto him, sing psalms unto him, talk ye of all his wondrous works. Glory ye in his holy name, let the heart of them rejoice that seek Jehovah. Seek Jehovah in his strength, seek his face continually. Oh, that's a good word. That's a good verse. Good reminder for us to daily. You know, this channel is called Daily Armor of God. We're putting on the armor of God daily. We should daily seek the Lord, daily seek his strength, daily seek his face, and try to hear his voice. That's a good verse right there. Remember his marvelous works that he hath done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. O ye seed of Israel his servant, ye children of Jacob his chosen ones, he is the Jehovah, our Elohim. His judgments are in all the earth. Be ye mindful always of his covenant, the word which ye, he commanded to a thousand generations, even of the covenant which he had made with Abraham, and of his oath unto Isaac, and hath confirmed the same to Jacob for a law, and to Israel for an everlasting covenant, saying, Unto thee will I give the land of Canaan the lot of your inheritance, when ye were but few, even a few, and strangers in it. And when they went from the nation to nation, and from one kingdom to another people, he suffered no man to do them wrong, yea, he reproved kings for their sakes, saying, Touch not mine anointed, and do my prophets no harm. Sing unto Jehovah all the earth, shew forth from day to day his salvation, declare his glory among the heathen, his marvelous works among all nations. For great is Jehovah, and greatly to be praised, he is also to be feared above all little g gods that's that this reminds me of that song for our uh, for his name is great and greatly to be praised for great is the lord and greatly to be praised and to be feared above all because he is the one true god all these little g gods they're nothing they're not even gods for all the gods of the people are idols yep right there they are nothing but idols and or like satanic, demonic devils. But Jehovah made the heavens. Glory and honor are in his presence. Strength and gladness are in his place. Give unto Jehovah, ye kindreds of the people. Give unto Jehovah glory and strength. Give unto Jehovah the glory due unto his name. Bring an offering and come before him. Worship Jehovah in the beauty of holiness. Fear before him all the earth. The world also shall be stable, that it not be moved. Let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice. Let the men say among the nations, Jehovah, the Jehovah reigneth. Let the sea roar in the fullness thereof. Let the fields rejoice and all that is therein. 
Then shall the trees of the woods sing out at the presence of Jehovah, because he cometh to judge the earth. O oh, give thanks unto Jehovah, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. What another great verse. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Amen. Amen. I thank God for his mercy. And say ye, save us, O Elohim of our salvation, and gather us together, and deliver us from the heathen, that we may give thanks to thy holy name, and glory in thy praise. Blessed be the Jehovah Elohim of Israel forever and ever. And all the people said, Amen, and praised Jehovah. So he left there before the Ark of the Covenant of Jehovah, Asaph and his brethren, to minister before the Ark continually, as every day's work required. And Obed-Dedom, with their brethren threescore and eight, Obed-Dedom, also the son of Jeduthun, and Hosa, to be porters. And Zadok the priest and his brethren, the priest before the tabernacle of Jehovah in the high place that was at Gibeon, to offer burnt offerings unto Jehovah upon the altar of the burnt offering, continually morning and evening, to do according to all that is written in the law of Jehovah, which he commanded Israel. And with them Haman and Jeduthun, and the rest that were chosen, who were expressed by name to give thanks to Jehovah, because his mercy endureth forever. And with them Haman and Jeduthun, with trumpets and cymbals, for those that should make a sound with musical instruments of Elohim. And the sons of Jeduthun were porters, and all the people departed, every man to his house, and David returned to bless his house. 1 Chronicles 17, verse 1. Now it came to pass, as David sat in his house, that David said to Nathan the prophet, Lo, I dwell in the house of cedars, but the ark of the covenant of Jehovah remaineth under curtains. Then Nathan said unto David, Do all that is in thine heart, for Elohim is with thee. And it came to pass the same night that the word of Elohim came to Nathan, saying, Go and tell David, my servant, thus saith Jehovah, Thou shalt not... Build me a house to dwell in. For I have not dwelt in a house since the day that I brought up Israel unto this day, but have gone from tent to tent, and from one tabernacle to another. Wheresoever I have walked with all Israel, spake I a word to any of the judges of Israel, whom I commanded to feed my people, saying, Why have ye not built me a house of cedars? Now therefore, thus shalt thou say unto my servant David, Thus saith Jehovah of hosts, I took thee from the sheep coat, even from following the sheep, that thou shouldest be ruler of my people Israel. And I have been with thee whithersoever thou hast walked, and have cut off all thine enemies from before thee, and have made thee a name like a name of the great men that are in the earth. Also I will ordain a place for my people Israel, and will plant them, and they shall dwell in their place, and shall be moved no more, neither shall the children of wickedness waste them any more as at the beginning. And since the time that I commanded judges to be over my people Israel, moreover I will subdue all thine enemies. Furthermore, I tell thee that Jehovah will build thee an house. And shall come to pass when thy days be expired that thou must go to be with thy fathers, that I will raise up thy seed after thee, which shall be the, thy sons, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build me an house, and I will establish his throne forever. I will be his father, and he shall be my son. I will not take my mercy away from him, as I took it from him that was before thee. But I will settle him in mine house and in my kingdom forever, and his throne shall be established forevermore. According to all these words, and according to all this vision, so did Nathan speak unto David. And David the king came and sat before Jehovah and said, Who am I, O Jehovah Elohim? And what is mine house that thou hast brought me hither to? And yet this was a small thing in thine eyes, O Elohim, for thou hast also spoken of thy servant's house for a great while to come, and hast regarded me according to the estate of a man of high degree, O Jehovah Elohim. What can David speak more to thee for the honor of thy servant? For thou knowest thy servant, O Jehovah, for thy servant's sake according to thine own heart hast thou done all this greatness in making known all these great things. O Jehovah, there is none like thee, neither is there any God or Elohim beside thee, according to all that we have heard with our ears. And what 
one nation in the earth is like thy people Israel, whom Elohim went to redeem to be his own people, to make thee a name of greatness and terribleness by driving out nations from before thy people, whom thou hast redeemed out of Egypt. For thy people Israel didst thou make thine own people forever, and thou, Jehovah, becamest their Elohim. Therefore now, Jehovah, let thy thing that thou hast spoken concerning thy servant and concerning his house be established forever, and do as thou hast said. Let it even be established that thy name may be magnified forever, saying, Jehovah of hosts is the Elohim of Israel, even a an Elohim to Israel, and let the house of David thy servant be established before thee. For thou, O my Elohim, hast told thy servant that thou wilt built him a house, therefore thy servant hath found in his heart to pray before thee. And now, Jehovah, thou art Elohim, and hast promised this goodness unto thy servant. Now therefore let it please thee to bless the house of thy servant, that it may be before thee forever. For thou bless it, O Jehovah, and it shall be blessed forever. Wow. So we learned in that chapter that God did not want a temple. He didn't want, um, you know, him to build anything. That's interesting. That God himself said, do not build me a temple. And what were they so concerned with all these years? Well, all these years, uh, you know, Saul, even uh, David was obsessed with building a temple despite what God said. Solomon was obsessed with building a temple. And, you know, even Herod, you know, all these people were obsessed with building the temple and i think that's that's kind of going towards you know about you know how all the pharisees and stuff made up all these laws that weren't part of you know god's law it was just they wanted to make up rules just to make up rules and so it's kind of like what i was thinking like maybe the them wanting to make a uh, temple was their way of being like, okay, this temple is so holy and sacred, but it's not the temple that's holy and sacred. It's the meaning behind it. It's what's inside, and what what would have been inside is the Ark, of the Covenant, you know, where God was. So if he's not in there, then it's just a, you know, just a stone building with no meaning. And so I think that's why God didn't want them him to build it, because it would place importance and meaning on the building itself rather than on what God actually is or what God wants us to care about. He wants us to care about a uh, relationship with him, not going to a church or going to a temple and, and having reverence for a church or reverence for a temple. No, have reverence for God himself. And so I think that's that's something we can learn from this last chapter is, you know, God, that's probably why God wanted, uh, did not want him to make the temple because he knew and people, even to this day, people place temples and churches and cathedrals and all these other places as like sacred and holy and revere them and treat them as, you know, such places of worship in God. And actually, in reality, they're not because God doesn't want us to place our um, all of our attention and put all of our importance on a building or on a place or on practices or on a specific religion he wants us to have a relationship with him personally and not worry about temples and churches and all this other mumbo jumbo so to speak that gets in the way of what's truly important so that's just my two cents worth guys here's the daily promise which is romans 8 26 Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And the reflection, and I quote, The gift of God's Spirit is truly miraculous and sure sign of His evident mercy. Though uncomprehending His work or power, ever will He aid us in our multiplied weakness. He is working in us daily, causing us to be conformed to the image of Christ himself. Praise the Lord for his helper, all you people of God. End quote. Amen. All I could say is praise God. And I really liked um, 1 Chronicles 16, the part where um, it was basically, you know, Psalms, essentially. It was recapping the Psalms. And there's so many good Psalms in there. So... Let's pray, guys. Dear Jehovah, our Elohim, 
our Abba. Thank you so much for this day and thank you for all that you've done for us. Thank you that we get to read your word. I pray you give us discernment so we can rightly divide your word truth and keep everything we, we read in our hearts and our minds. Please help us be an example to others and bring others to you for your sake and for your glory. Help us to see your will and to see your path. Please show us what you will do in our lives and lead us every step of the way. Thank you for all that you've done, all that you're doing, and all that you will do. And I pray, Christ Jesus' precious holy name, Yeshua. Thank you, Yahweh, our Abba. Amen. Amen and amen. So, guys, thank you so much for watching and listening. I hope you have a good evening, morning, night, wherever you're at. And as always, TTFN, Tata for now. Take care. God bless. Remember to put God first in everything you do. Have faith in Him. Trust in Him. And you'll never be sorry. We'll see you tomorrow with more Chronicles. Have a good one. Bye-bye.